Check out the wooden frame, hmm? It's lighter and more flammable than titanium. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 comebacks in kids' shows. Now comes the part where I double cross you. Dai Li, arrest the Fire Nation princess. For this list, we'll be looking at the most brutal lines of back talk featured in TV series for younger audiences. What is your all time favorite kids' shows comeback? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 10, The Wrong Thing, Victorious. Jade West might be the most revered Nickelodeon tough girl. Look at the cover of your script. Oh, Sophie and Michelle wrote the play we're doing. Oh. She's constantly telling her classmates at Hollywood Arts High School exactly what she thinks, and we love her for it. Sinjin Van Cleef, on the other hand, is the classic kind of creepy weirdo. Put them together, add some accidental disco, and this classic line is what you get. Jade starts the scene already grumpy while she watches Beck play the love interest to her frenemy Tori in a theater rehearsal. Then Sinjin hits the wrong button on the console, triggering mood-killing disco music. For this mishap, he becomes the unlucky target of Jade's rage. Why don't I put the disco? <laughs> I'm sorry, I hit the wrong thing. No, 15 years ago, your mother gave birth to the wrong thing. We'd almost feel bad for the poor geek if he didn't spend the rest of the episode defending disco. Will you kill the disco? No one can kill disco. <laughs> Number nine, cool bike, the fairly odd parents. Is it a bike? Who told you? It's not just a bike, it's a bike I made. In anticipation of an upcoming father-son bike race, Timmy's dad, in his typical subpar fashion, makes his son a bike. This isn't the sort of contraption that's going to win races anytime soon. The frame is made of wood, the seat is a literal bag of poop, the tires aren't the same size, and it got fuzzy pink house shoes for pedals. And check out those pedals, fuzzy toe loops for extra power and comfort. Timmy, to say the least, is ready to wish for something better. Before he does though, he complains that this bike just isn't worthy of him. In response, Cosmo lets the kid know this bike actually fits him to a T. I need a bike that's as cool as I am. Timmy, this bike is as cool as you are. Number eight, like a son, Phineas and Ferb. Dad, come on. You know it's embarrassing when you brag about me by belittling others. Phineas and Ferb features a ton of unique, hilarious, and somewhat antagonistic duels. Ball G and Buford, Agent P and Dr. Doofensmertz, Susie and Candace, but Carl the Intern and Major Monogram's unique combo of undying adoration versus total disregard is especially fun. Carl, you disgust and fascinate me. In one scene, Carl's a little too keen to be at the Major's beck and call, and Monogram disappoints him severely and brutally. The unadulterated comedy of it all never fails to get us, but we still can't help feeling just a little bit bad for Carl. Is there any recovering from this? Carl! Yes? Did I ever tell you you're like the son I never had? Really, sir? Yes, it's because you're so unlike the son that I did have. Number seven, Azula versus Longfang, Avatar The Last Airbender. I said, arrest her. What is wrong with you? It's because they haven't made up their minds. They're waiting to see how this is going to end. There's political subterfuge and a deposing of a king. Longfang, the Earth's King's right-hand man, and the leader of the Daili, who are essentially the Earth's Kingdom's secret service, plans to take the throne. It's time that I regain control of Ba Sing Se, and you have something I need. His mistake is partnering with Azula to do so. When he orders the Fire Princess's arrest, the Daili don't budge. They all watch as she takes the throne. The hard truth of her victory is delivered in the most satisfying, savage way. You've beaten me at my own game. Don't flatter yourself. You were never even a player. It's an epic demonstration of her manipulative, power-hungry nature. Number six, bad birthday, Drake and Josh. Uh, so how come you're up and dressed so early? Uh, because today is a very special day. <laughs> no. Drake and Josh sets the kids' show standard for odd bickering duel, with the stepbrothers always serving up wacky situations and hilarious conflicts. Josh's reaction to Drake getting them stuck in a doorless treehouse is classic.
I see the problem. Oh, do ya? However, a different incredible moment deserves the spot for this series' best clapback. First, it's Josh's birthday. He's ecstatic but nervous because he is meeting his hero, Oprah. Then he hits her with his car. Watch out! <laughs> Josh bemoans his ruined birthday, and Drake asks just about the dumbest question ever. The birthday boy sarcastically responds that the weather is the source of his sorrow. Then he makes it clear, of course, it's the Oprah thing. This is my worst birthday ever. Because you ran over Oprah? No, because it's a little humid. Yes, because I ran over Oprah. Number five, being clear, Animaniacs. Snappy lines were one of the hallmarks of the 1990s comedy cartoon about the Warner siblings. This is a classroom, not a music hall. Now find your seats. Got my seat. Got mine. Here's mine. Bet you don't have trouble finding yours. Each episode of Animaniacs was completely different and often put the characters in new settings. This moment has Yakko, Wacko, and Dot in the classroom. The teacher tries her best to be clear that the trio won't get away with their normal shenanigans. Stop that! I'm warning you! Stop, Stop that. that! I'm warning you! The kids show her right from the get-go by popping out of a box and bursting into song that her warnings will be easier declared than actually put into practice. But the real shining moment of back talk is this one. The Warners take their cartoon magic and show Miss Flamel what clear really means. It's no wonder they bring her to her wit's end. Let me warn you that I will tolerate no foolishness. Are we clear? No, we're opaque. Now we're clear. <sighs> Number four, who put you on the planet? SpongeBob SquarePants. Today I feel like doing some dancing. There's no way a list of the best kids show comebacks could leave out a moment from SpongeBob SquarePants. Picking just one was tough. The time when SpongeBob calls Patrick a stupid star is iconic. It cost me one of my good noodle stars. Well, who cares about a stupid star? Gee, Patrick, it seems like you would care a lot about stupid stars, considering you are one. But we think the best comeback is a different SpongeBob line. When the goofball dances to music that's straight from his brain, Grumpy Squidward makes his disdain known. SpongeBob gets him back with this simple, effective, and absolutely devastating response. That is the stupidest dance move I've ever seen. Who put you on the planet? <laughs> and our hero spends the rest of the episode getting the last laugh, outdancing Squidward at every turn. Number three, not Auburn, the sweet life of Zack and Cody. Hey, Zack, did you hear? I'm Cody, the one with the cool gangster look. <laughs> Thought you were a pirate. The troublemaking twins from the sweet life of Zack and Cody are constantly slamming each other, which makes for a lot of iconic one-liners. The quip from this moment, though, is definitely one of the show's best. For context, Cody decides he is done with getting mistaken for his twin brother, Zack. No, he's not. I'm Cody, and I'm sick and tired of people always thinking I'm Zack. I'm not Zack. I'm Cody. C-O-D-Y, Cody! So he comes up with some creative solutions, one of them being to dye his hair. Rather than Honey Miss Auburn, you'll remember that Cody gets what is more of a bright red mess. Zach, ever the encouraging twin, has this hysterical witty comment to offer. Oh no, the box said it would be a Honey Miss Auburn. Oh honey, you missed Auburn big time. Number two, Lonely Child. Arthur. Sometimes I really wish I was an only child. Life would be so easy. PBS's Arthur is a show with surprisingly sick burns. Arthur and the ever sassy DW's constant sibling squabbles mean nearly every episode has a great comeback or two. But the most devastating verbal takedown doesn't come from the show's sass queen. It's from her older brother. Wow, that looks like fun. Not when Arthur's steering. Last time he almost drove me into the lake. There's a race at the sibling festival, and DW, intentions in the right place, worries about only child Sue Ellen not getting to compete. The rest of the clip doesn't even need an explanation. Roll it. May 
maybe there's a contest for lonely children after this. It's only children, DW. A lonely child is what you're gonna be when I sell you. There's zero returning from that. And it's pretty satisfying to see DW get a taste of her own medicine for once. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, best man, iCarly. All right, come on, we gotta study. <sighs> Let me just eat one more meatball. <laughs> you said that three meatballs ago. I have a problem. Sam from iCarly might be the champion of kids' show clapbacks. She's definitely delivered some doozies over the show's run. This one unforgettable comeback goes for the juggler. It starts when the iCarly web show gets involved in a couple's marriage proposal and eventual wedding. We've been dating a long time and, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I just love you to pieces and uh, I, I hope you feel the same way. Cut the chase, Gordon. Right? <laughs> the groom randomly invites tech producer Freddy to be the best man. The show's resident geek had just teased Carly and Sam about being bridesmaids, and Sam fires back with this ridiculous burn. Oh, the irony. What irony? You're the best at nothing and you're barely a man. Ouch, that one hurts. Of course, she later briefly dates this not so best man. So here's a lesson to be careful with your words. You just might end up eating them. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.